Okay, so uh, Tiffany has a strip of sheet metal. It's 200 centimeters long. Once but you can read. Okay, so just uh, basically you can work through this on your own. The first part, anyways, right? Be able to go through this. So you got a partner you can work with. Figure out this, and then this, and then fill in the table, and then chart, and then graph. Okay, so. Independent. Independent variable is the variable for which you choose the values. Dependent variables are the values that depend on what you have chosen for the independent variable. So in this case, which one is the independent variable? The width. Right. So we're going to choose different values for the width and then see what happens to the area based upon that. Yes? Could it not be length? It could not be length. No, it could be. Yes, it could be length. Could it be area? Um, and the dependent variables are? Area. Now I'm going to say length and area because I think we had to figure out length first. Okay. So the length depends. Oh, yeah, it could legitimately also be length that you choose and then the width and the area would be the, uh, the dependent variables. On the grid above, use values for width and area to draw. Okay, we did that. What is the name of this curve? It's a hill. We're not going to call it peaches. Okay, so we'll call it. Parabola. Um, the domain of relation is the set of all possible values of the independent variable. What is the domain of this relation? Insanity. So it's a set of all W's. <laughs> it looks like a face. So the domain is set of all W's such that W is between 0 and 100, and W belongs to the reals. Okay, and at times we can leave off the W belongs to the reals. It's almost implied by saying it's between 0 and 100, right? It has to be all real numbers. Uh, the range is the set of all possible values of the dependent variable. What is the range? <coughs> And again, also we could leave off uh, VA belongs to the reals. That is really implied by saying that it's any, you know, it's values vary between 0 and 2,500. What is the maximum area of the pen? Do you know this for sure? Well, it looks like it is. We don't know for sure. Sure, we have a point, but well, you know we, what's happening exactly on the other side of it. It's like 49.5 or 51.5, right? So you know, what width and length give this maximum area? So it's 50 centimeters by 50 centimeters. Okay. Which part of the graph did you use to determine the maximum area? Now yeah, it's a special name for the highest point of this parabola, the vertex. The vertex is a local maximum, but it is also an absolute maximum, right? So it's a local and absolute maximum. The vertex of a parabolic curve is the exact point where the curve changes direction. What are the coordinates of the vertex for this curve? Uh, 50 and yeah, so 50, 2,500. How does the vertex relate to the maximum area and the width that gives the maximum area? The 
Maximum. Let's be a little more specific. I'm starting you off. You fill in the rest. The x coordinate of, yes. of the vertex is the square root. Are you just guessing now? Oh, you know 50s, oh, 50s. Oh, the x Okay. How does the vertex? So let's read this before we answer. How does the vertex relate to the maximum area and the width that gives the maximum area? The x coordinate of the vertex is, is the maximum. No. The x coordinate of the vertex is the same square root is the y coordinate. Square root of the maximum area. Is the maximum area of the, the x coordinate of the vertex is it the maximum area? It's the width. No. It's the width. Read the question. How does the vertex relate to the maximum area and the width? The x coordinate of the vertex is the width. The y coordinate of the vertex is the not width. Thank you. The x coordinate of the vertex is the width that gives you the maximum area. The y coordinate of the vertex is? The y coordinate of the vertex is the maximum area that gives you the maximum width. I don't know. The y coordinate of the vertex of the vertex is? The maximum area. Thank you. I'll try and make it more difficult because it isn't difficult. Go close to this red map. Okay. <laughs> so we have Go close to the world is by the world fast faster. We have a coordinate, which is the coordinate of the vertex. And what does the vertex mean? It's this is the width and this is the maximum area, right? Because you're going to be relating coordinates of vertices, which is the plural of vertex, to the situation that's being described, right? And so you need to do it in those terms. What is the minimum area of the pen, and what width and length give the minimum area? Minimum. So the minimum area is zero centimeters squared. What width and length? <laughs> wow, God. <laughs> wow. Okay. So, what's the length of zero and a hundred? centimeters gives the minimum area, or a length and width of 0 and 100 centimeters gives the minimum area. Okay. Do you realize what you wrote? No. <laughs> no, I'm going to write it. How did you know? Sorry, I don't have a dirty mind. Yeah. Well, I remember really elsewhere. I saw it. pen is. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Way newer than the sword. <laughs> That's a really small pendant. <laughs> uh, <laughs> note that the curve is symmetrical with respect to a vertical line. Is it spring break yet? No. Called the axis of symmetry. Draw the axis of symmetry on the graph in question three. And what is the equation of the axis for the graph of symmetry? X equals So where do I draw the axis of symmetry? X equals Okay, yeah. So the axis of symmetry passes through the vertex, right? Because we are symmetrical, or the graph is symmetrical with respect to a line passing through the vertex. Right? Was one half could be folded on top of the other half, or vice versa. And what is the equation? I said x is equal to 50, right? So x is equal to the x-coordinate of the vertex. 
Use the graph in question three, so we're using the graph to estimate the area when the width is 25. And uh, what else? 45, so I should get those both. So, that. so how do I estimate the area when the width is 25? You do. You look at it. So you start at 25. I would say 80. Go up until you intersect. I would say 80. And you go across, and what do we get? Less than 2,000. I think it's 1,800. I get 1,800. And what about 45? So we'll go with 1,800. 25. It's actually 1875. No, not what actually is what you just estimated. And with 45? Four, what's 45? Oh, 24. 24. 24. 24. Not what it is. Estimate it. That's 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 2450? Thank you. Okay, so what do we say, 1,800? Disease name. Fake. Okay. <laughs> Use the graph in question three to estimate the width when the area is 2,100. Okay, so estimate the width, uh, yeah, the width when the area is 2,100. What do we get? What the what answer? If you actually have points on it, you should be able to come up with the answer reasonably quickly. Okay, what about 2275? Okay, so estimating off the graph, we may or may not be accurate. Depends on how well we've drawn it, or how well it's drawn if it's a graph that's given to us. Oh, so we can use technology to help us graph these things. Calculator needs to be able to graph relations. It needs to see an equation that uses x and y as variables. So we have to rewrite a equals l times w as y equals. So we need a formula now in the form y equals. To do that, if the perimeter of the pen is 200 centimeters and x represents the width and l represents the length, write an equation for length in terms of x. So if we go back to our original, right, we're going to say that 2l plus 2x equals 200. And we want to isolate l, so how are we going to do that? Okay, so we can divide through by 2, because everything's even, and then subtract x from both sides to isolate l, and we now have an expression for l. Recall that area is length times width. Use this formula and your equation to write an equation for the area in terms of x. So area is equal to l times x, Whoops. but l is equal to 100 minus x times x, which will be 100x. So what are we going to graph? We're going to graph y1 is equal to 100x minus x squared. Okay. Or we could actually even enter this into L1, bracket 100 minus x times x. Uh, or y1, you might want to lead with the x, so go negative x squared plus 100x, or 
y1 is x bracket 100 minus x, or that, right, just that, right? any one of the above. So, I was in this somewhere. There's going to be a... Okay, so how do we, uh, what steps do we use to determine the maximum? Second, calc, maximum, which is number four. What did you do? It's already on the thing. Did you do left bound? Yeah, it was already there. How ironic. So you need to bound the maximum, right, to the left of it, to the right of it, and then a guess. Calculus 49.9999999, what do we write that as? 50, right? So calculators aren't always exact. Okay. So you don't write down stuff like negative 1.3 times 10 to the negative 16. You put zero, right? You don't write down 2.9999999, you write three. Okay, so you realize that that's where that's going to be. So what are our steps? So step one, A, so one, graph, y1 is equal to negative x squared plus 100x. Step two, you go second, <coughs> calc, maximum, and then you uh, record your values, right? So we get a maximum area of 2,500 and the corresponding width of 2,500 square centimeters, or centimeters square, and the width of 50 centimeters. You can use the table function on your calculator. Okay, so if I just go second function graph, we're going to see the table. Right. We can change how the table, how we view the table, move this down. You can use table function and calculator. You could change uh, how if we want to see the widths by 5 or by 10. So in this case we're looking for 5. So you go second window, table set. This allows you to start your table anywhere, right? So if you know you're looking in the table for an answer and you know it's above 100 or something, you could start your table at 100 and not have to hit down arrow 100 times, right? <coughs> Delta table, that's the change in the table. So every amount is going to change by 5. And then we go second table. So now instead of going 0, 1, 2, 3, it's 0, 5, 10, 15, 20. Okay. Okay. And you can scroll through. So use the table to determine the width. When the table is, when the, uh, sorry, when the width is 25, the area is 1875. Centimeters squared. When the table is 45, come on back. Okay, so we're just going to arrow down, 45. Okay, we got 2,475. Use the table function to determine the width when the area is 2,100. So now we're looking for 2,100. That appears at 30. And since we know it's a parabola, also at 70. And 2275 occurs at 65. And by symmetry, also occurs at 35, right? So 30 centimeters or 70 centimeters. And 35 centimeters or 65 centimeters. Now those may be the same values that we had before, which is fine, right? Or the values we had before um, may have been wrong because they were estimates off of a graph, right? So they may not have been as, as exact or ex exact at all. Your second uh, calc function on your calculator to determine the area when the width is 28. Okay, so we go to graph again. We go back to the graph. Second calc. Value. Value allows you to put in an x value. For us, x is the width. So I want to determine the width when it's 28. I put in 28, and we get a y value of 2016. 
Okay, so 2016 centimeters squared. And we're going to do 41.4. So again, second function calc. We want the value, it's number one. We enter 41.4. And we get 2426.04. Okay, so 2426.04. Centimeter squared. You can also trace, I don't. I never use trace, never have, never will. But you can use trace, and that just traces along. <coughs> but it just it gives you its own arbitrary values, right? It's just tracing along, giving you each basically pixel. As it moves from one X pixel to the next X pixel, then you can you know, input a number with trace. Can you? Okay. Which trace, that just takes you to value then, right? Yeah. So I guess if you're in trace. Well, learn something new. I never use it though. But apparently you can. So you can trace along and then hit a value if you want a particular value. Okay, I use second calc value. Um, use the second calc function to determine uh, two equations to determine the width. So what do I put in? How do I figure out the width when the area is 1900? Go to y equals and do what? Set one at Put y2 oh. is 1900, right? Then when we hit graph, we're going to get the curve and a line which represents a y value of 1900, which allows us to find the two corresponding x values. So second calc. Now we're going to do an intersect. When I do intersect, I think I've told you this before, right? I just move down to about the point of intersection. You don't really need to, just hit enter. And then hit enter three times. One, two, three. And we get 25.5. And, or or, rather. Or, second calc. 74.5. Intersect with shortest distance between two points. Why do you keep going? What's the shortest distance between two points? Straight line. Straight line. So if I trace now, if I arrow now, I'm going to go along the curve. So I can just use my up or down to change to the other function, right? So now it's on y2, and now I just get to move straight across the line. But then what if you say because you're still trapping the same amount of pixels? I don't know. Yeah. Are you saying this you, did you count? Circle? Is it? It actually is the same. It's totally is it the same? Oh, well, I feel better going along a straight line than I do going around the curve. Uh, and then hit enter three times. Now we get 74.5. Curves are you always And 2200 centimeters. All right, this time I will count. Uh, 2200. So we're going to go uh, y equals, we can change 1900 to 2200. Okay, graph. We're going to go intersect, so second calc, intersect. It puts me at 50, 2500, so let's go the curve this way. So we'll go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Took 17. And we got 32.7 centimeters. 32.7. Okay, and I'm going to re-graph. I'm going to redraw the graph so that... Uh, It'll put it back in. So, so second calc, max, okay, left it there. So I'm going to clear out y2. No, I'm not. Damn it, quit giving me. You don't even need to go all the way, just go past half the difference. What? Well, no. Mm -hmm. I said the last counter. It's, 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 it's,
Okay, so we're going to move down here and 17 last time. One, two. Oh, really? <laughs> uh, we can start over again. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. I'd say fifteen. Maybe sixteen if we go. The life's always. So, it's like how that works. The line is faster. By one pixel. Well, not that much in this case, but, you know, when we're talking about going like this, because you could be tracing a curve that goes up off your screen, and you've got to trace all the way up and back down again, or go on a straight line. Whatever, your choice, I don't care, just hold the button down. It makes more sense here because if I hold for more than three seconds, it goes to a right click. It doesn't matter on yours so much. Uh, what was the other one? 67.3. Yes. Okay. Yes, we're finished. What's next? Oh, no. Do we do it too? What? What? Why are Fridays always the longest one? Quadratic functions. <laughs> equation of a quadratic function. The equation of a quadratic function is of the form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are constants, and a is not equal to zero, because if a were zero, then it wouldn't be a quadratic function. It'd be linear or constant. So is 2x squared minus 6x plus 1 a quadratic function? Is x cubed plus 4x squared? Is 20x minus 5x squared? Yes. Is 5 over x squared? Is x squared plus root x? Okay, no, yes, no, yes, no. Yes, no, yes, no, no. Graph of a quadratic. The graph of every quadratic function is a curve called a? Parabola. Parabolas have vertexes. The problem may open down in which the vertex will be a? Maximum point or the parabola may open up, in which case the parabola will be, in which the blank will be. No, I guess that's vertex yeah. probably, right? In which the vertex? Vertex makes more sense there. So in which the vertex will be a? Minimum point. The vertex can be found using the TI-83 calculator by selecting second calc and selecting maximum or minimum, right? Okay, well, thanks, Logan. Or minimum. I got sperm. Axis of symmetry. The parabola is symmetrical about V. What kind of line is this? What kind of line is this? Vertical. Vertical line that passes through the vertex. See, every answer starts with a V. This line is called the axis of symmetry because it's got to start with a V. Why isn't the word symmetry symmetrical? And why is it palindrome a palindrome? If the vertex of a parabola is mn, then the equation of the axis of symmetry will be x equals m. Domain range. The domain of all quadratic functions is x is a Okay, set of all x such that x belongs to the reals. The range of a quadratic function will depend on whether the parabola opens up or down. If the vertex is mn and the parabola opens down, then the range will be y is less or equal to n. Yeah, set of all y such that y is less than or equal to n. 
If the vertex of the parabola is m and it opens up, then the range will be? Why is greater than or equal to n? The y-intercept is the y-coordinate of the point where the graph intersects the? X. X-axis. Y-axis. What? You said axis. At this point, you said axis. No, no, no. You want me to replay this? <laughs> At this point, the value of the x coordinate is always zero. zero. Want to bet? Yeah, I don't want to <laughs> The y, look where the mic's pointing. It's going to pick you up more than me almost. Woo! The y intercept can be found using the TI 83 calculator by selecting second count value and then typing x equals zero. Zero. Like our if the equation of a quadratic <laughs> function is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, the y-intercept is equal to? C. The x-intercept is the x-coordinate of the points where the graph intersects the? X-axis. X-axis. At these points, or point, or nothing, the value Zero. of the y-coordinate is always? Zero. Zero. The x-intercepts are also called the zeros of the function. Oh. The x-intercepts can be calculated using the TI-83 calculator by doing second calc zero. Another better way, to me anyways, because I'd rather do an intersect than a zero because you just move to the point. With a zero, you've got to do left bound, right bound, and guess, is to select y2 equals zero and then do second calc intersect, right? I prefer that. It doesn't matter, though. You do what you want. <coughs> Examples. <coughs> For each of the functions, determine the following round answers to the nearest hundred if necessary. I think really it should say state the following, right? We're not really determining. Okay, what are the, oh, x squared minus 6x plus 8. I guess we better graph this first. Right? Oh, no. Turn on. Clear. Clear. Uh, we got x squared minus 6x, x squared minus uh, And then just go zoom standard, right? Might as well go to the standard window. And there we go. So we can graph this out. Okay, what are the coordinates of the vertex? 3, 3, negative 1. Negative 1, 3. Three negative one. What's the equation of the axis of symmetry? One. X, equals X, equals X, equals X equals three. Make oh, sure you I write derp. it as X equals. Derp. Don't just write down three. Okay. It has to be an equation, so it's got to be X equals three. So domain. X belongs to the reals. What's the range? Well, it has to be y is greater than or y is greater than or equal to minus one. What are the x-intercepts? Oh my god, that's correct. Two and four. What is the y-intercept? Eight. Okay. Let's do the next one. Negative five x squared plus eight x plus fifteen. Uh, let's put in a negative five x squared plus Plus 8x plus 15. Okay, so I'm not seeing the whole thing. I need to adjust my window. Points of interest to me are the x-intercepts, which don't look like they're nice. Well, maybe one is, but the other one isn't. I don't know. It's hard to tell. What are the possible rational zeros for this? All perfect factors. Negative 8. Yeah. Plus or minus 1, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 5, plus or minus 15, plus or minus 1 fifth, plus or minus 3 fifths, plus or minus 1 again, no, and then again. Okay, that should be it. Make sure you can list all of those on Tuesday, right? We've got a test coming. I'll just write it down. Not easy, long test. I wrote it. It's long time. Long test. Long test. <laughs> Specialized. So let's go, uh, what do we got? One, two, three. So I'm going to adjust my window based on the fact that it goes from about negative one to three. So I'm going to say let's go negative five to five. So we tighten in a bit. 
And my y min is fine at negative 10. And my y max, I'm going to give 20 a try. And that appears to be pretty decent, right? Not good. Okay, so we now want to find the coordinate of the vertex, which is, have you found it? Second count. 18.2. Okay, 0.8 and 18.2. Uh, okay, so first, sorry, first we're supposed to graph this, right? Oh, and I guess if we're graphing this, we should label some stuff here, right? Like this is 2, and this is 4, and this is 8. Okay? And at this point is that value. Okay, quarter of this vertex. What do we say? 0 0.8 and 18.2. Let's go to two decimals. So zero point. So let's label this point 0 0.80, 18.20. Okay. So points of interest, and you're always going to, of course, include arrows on the ends, right? Surely this goes on forever. Points of interest are your vertex, your x-intercepts, your y-intercepts. Uh, what's the equation of the axis of symmetry? X equals zero. Okay, x equals 0 0.80. What's your domain? X minus real. X minus real. What's your range? Y is less than or equal to 18.20. Okay. Y is less than or equal to 18.20. Okay, x intercepts. So I'm going to graph y2 equals zero. That's why I like to do these. The y intercept is just 15, right? You just look at the equation. So second count, uh, intersect. And I'm going to move along the straight line because I'm sure it's a shorter distance. And I get uh, negative 1.11. So x equals negative 1.11. And 2.71. I'll trust you. He doesn't actually trust you. Y-intercept, 15. Okay, so let's go label this then. 2.7. That's 2.71. Mm -hmm. So negative 1.11, 2.71, 15. Okay, so we've got all points of interest labeled. You can do this in decimals as well, then it'll give you those points. Like you say, show me the intercepts and stuff. I know on the test, but hey, you'll do one where you don't even have a calculator on the test. So. Is that it? Yes, it is. Really? Yes. Oh, well. Are we done?